Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the brightness and contrast and the exposure adjustment layers in Photoshop. Theme tune! Swim. Swim. Okay, I don't know why I swam at the end of that. Okay, so this is part of my Photoshop training course. If you want all of the videos and all of the work files, then head over to photosincolor.com where you can get all of that. So, today we're gonna to be essentially looking at brightness, contrast, and exposure. So before we jump into that, this is a detailed look at just this single adjustment layer. Well, both of them, actually. Um, so the difference between brightness and contrast and exposure. Exposure essentially looks at when you take a photograph, how you were to expose it. So the longer the shutter speed or the smaller the aperture. Essentially, by, making, by moving this up in stops or steps, the whole image is gonna get brighter, but it's gonna prioritize the highlights. Whereas if you just use brightness, essentially what happens is the whole thing becomes brighter. And then contrast does something completely different. So let's jump into Photoshop and have a look. So this is the image we're gonna be using today. Remember, you can get this as a download file from photosincolor.com. And what we're gonna be looking at here is on the side, the adjustment layers. So we have a background layer down here, and then if we want to add the brightness and contrast adjustment layer, we just click on this, and it's gonna add one at the top. And we can see this is where we can make our settings. Now, it's pretty simple, because what we have is a brightness slider, Slide to the right, it goes brighter, slide to the left, and it goes darker. That's really quite simple. And then the slider below that is the contrast. Now, contrast works slightly differently. You boost the contrast, which basically means the lighters get lighter and the darkers get darker, and you go the other direction and the lighters get darker and the darkers get lighter, essentially, so it flattens an image. Now, a great way to look at that is if you were to look at the histogram. Now, if you don't see the histogram, all you have to do is come over here and select Window Histogram, and it's gonna open it up like so. Now, if you don't see it very big, you can have different views down here, so we're gonna be an expanded view. Now, if we look at this image, now it's fairly dark. If we were to move the brightness, See how the histogram, this is our color range, darks, midtones, and shadows. Now we can actually just look at this as an RGB instead, so it makes it nice and simple to look at. Bring it back to how it was, okay? It's slightly darker. So what we're gonna to want to do is you're gonna to want to move this to make it a little bit brighter to all fit in. Now, let's have a look at what contrast does. So look at the shape of this. Contrast, if we move it up, What's gonna happen is the, those lines are gonna split, so it's gonna actually move to the left and move to the right, so the darker's darker, lighter, sorry, lighter's lighter, darker's darker, and if you watch, all the way. Whereas if we go the opposite direction, it's gonna clump up in the middle. That's because it's flattening the image. So, that's essentially what those sliders do, and we can end up with something like this. Now. Let's look what we might do to this actual image. I chose this one because there's lots of highlights and lots of shadows, so we can see what happens with the contrast. Now, before we move forward, let me talk about legacy. What this does, this uses the old drivers or the old um, Photoshop, basically, from when it was years ago. And if you click on this, you can see the results are completely different. Okay, it works, the drivers work completely different and the, um, I would say it doesn't work anywhere nearly as well. That's because now Photoshop actually analyzed the image and it's way more intelligent. So let's boost up that contrast, but now we've lost all the details here. And here's a little bit, well actually it works well here. So what happens if we were to say boost the brightness? Well, here we've got some of the details back, but at the top we've blown it out completely. So what can we actually do to get around this? Well. What you can do, and I'll get onto this in some later tutorials, is that you can use this, which is called a mask on the side. So for example, let's reset this and let's go brightness all the way up, okay? Then we're gonna add another adjustment layer, uh, layer and we're gonna bring the brightness all the way down, okay? So essentially, brightness down, okay, is what's gonna make this sky look really wonderful, and brightness up is what's gonna bring all this back. 
So all we need to do within this here is let's select the sky. We can select up here by this is the quick selection tool. And I know that it's going to do a really good job of selecting all of those highlights. Now it has included a bit of this. So I can actually choose to get rid of that section from the selection. Voila, nice and simple. Now that I've got this selected, all I need to do, well, the quickest way to do this is if I was to delete the layer mask, I've got this selected, then all I have to do is click select layer mask. And as you can see, it's now built this in. Command I will invert that. So now just the bottom of the mountains is selected. So all you can see here is what I've done is that essentially I've added the brightness and contrast layer only to the mountains. Now, the top one here where we brought the sky down, we want to use the same layer, so it's going to use the other half of it. So hit Alt or Option and drag that up to the one above. Hit Yes, it's going to say, do you want to replace it? So we've done that. And then up here, all we have to do is Command I, and that's going to invert it like so. And you can see, that's very extreme. Okay, we really brought that sky down. So let's come back into this by double clicking the icon and let's not go quite as far. And double click the other item and we won't take that one quite as far either. Now, we can see that it's brought this image to life a little bit. Let's come down, if you hold Option and click on the eyeball here at the bottom, which means basically that's how you hide and show the different layers. Now, if I click this bottom layer by um, holding Alt or Option, basically that's the original, it just shows that layer, click it again and it brings it back. So we can see exactly what that adjustment layer has allowed us to do, which looks great. Now, let's hide both of these. So to hide things, you can either clo close them off with these eyes just here, or I can select both, Command G to add it into a group, and then I can hide the group amazingly powerful. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the exposure. And this works exactly the same way. So we can add all sorts of different masks and things, but check this out. I can boost my exposure, okay? So again, it's, it's got a priority on the highlights and I can reduce the exposure. Now what this actually does is it gives me a few extra options and that's these three elements down here. And it, you can choose where you want to set to be your correct exposure. So for example, if I click on this one just here and click down here, what I'm saying is I want that to be the darkest point. Okay, so it's darkened it down so it's been the correct exposure for that. Now, if I want to expose for the highlights, I click on this and click on a highlight and now it's exposed correctly for the highlights. And if I want to correctly exposed for the mid-tones, so I can find something in the mid-tones, I can click there and it's going to figure out what the best is. Now, just to show you how that works in reverse, if I was to select the highlight one and select down here, basically it's going to blow the entire image out because I've said I want to expose the highlights to be this bright, so it's had to brighten the whole thing. And the other way, if I was to take the shadows and click on the highlights, it's going to completely ruin the image because it's going to get completely confused and it's not going to be able to bring it back. Okay? Whereas if I was to click somewhere over, oh, let's just reset this and then let's take the midtones and I would say the midtones are somewhere like that blue over there. It's made it a little bit dark. So let's reset it and we're going to instead select the midtones to be here. Now this is a correct exposure. Turn on these bottom items. And then if you see what we've done here is we've exposed it correctly and what we've done is we've added on these other brightness and contrast. Now you might want to choose to do that in a completely different order and again there's many ways of doing each of these things. For example, let's hide both of these. I could take the background layer and I could go image, adjustments and now I can find the same things inside here. Exposure, brightness and contrast, however, if I actually make one of these changes here, like so, hit OK, that's actually affected this layer, so I can't go back and get rid of that. That's why I would always recommend, don't do it through image and adjustments, do it through an adjustment layer over here. 
So that's how to use those particular adjustment layers inside Photoshop. Remember, if you want that image to be able to practice along with, go to Photos in Color, the link is in the description, and you can get that file. Also, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as I have loads more videos coming up in the future. This is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com.